Hello everyone and welcome to Makai World Reviews. I have returned, as you well know, and I bring with you holiday cheer. The only holiday I like anyways, that of which is Halloween. Though I do enjoy watching government buildings blow up on Guy Fox Day, which is how I believe we should celebrate it at least. I am the Zona Makai, Master of Minds and of Men, and today we'll be looking at The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, Episodes 6 through 10, in this ongoing look of the first 20 episodes. I just like round numbers, and I would also like to leave some content for later. And don't forget, October 31st, Halloween, I will be making a list of the stories from worst to best. That's an extra bonus for all of you. I said last week I won't be going over writers and stuff, directors, etc. For obvious reasons, it's unnecessary information for this. Anyway, hit subscribe, and let's get to the spooky stories. Starting off with episode 6 from season 7 in 1995. The couch gag is all the Simpsons are hung. I wish there was a better way to word that. Uh, Maggie seems fine, however. Story 1, Attack of the 50-Foot Eyesore, which is really a general kaiju story. Homer desires a big donut, a really big donut. So he steals a giant metal one. Due to this and some vague issues in space, giant mascots come to life and attack the city. Lisa contacts the marketing department of the mascots and thanks to Paul Anka, convinces everyone to ignore them and they all die. I like the part, Paul Anka part and the Chief Wiggum shooting the captain of the high school basketball team because he thought he was a giant monster was funny. But the rest of the episode, or the rest of the story at least, was fairly meh. I liked the idea, but it didn't really go anywhere and only gave me a slight chuckle. Pretty mediocre as far as opening segments go. Story number two, Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace, which is obviously a Nightmare on Elm Street parody. As you might expect, this is about someone killing children in their dreams. That person, Groundskeeper Willie, who swore vengeance when he was killed by a very negligent PTA, mostly Homer. We see that a number of the kids are being harassed by Willie in their dreams, but the first to be killed is Martin, and as they are taking his body away, the sheet falls off, revealing his dead body to the class, and they scream. That, that always has me laughing. Simpson kids obviously decide to deal with this, and thanks to their imagination, handle Willie soundly, who it turns out is alive at the end? Yeah. So they did kind of a fun thing where, instead of just parodying one of the movies, they parodied the concept, which I liked better, and they got a lot of mileage out of it here. I liked that the beginning, the art for the dream sequence was different. Uh, it was a little shinier, a little more rounder, a little sillier. Sadly, they didn't keep that up for any of the other dreams. I thought that was a missed opportunity there. I don't know why. Maybe a budget reason. It also has two great jokes in the PTA meeting. The thermostat that says, don't touch, comma, willy. Homer reads it as, don't touch, willy. And is like, well, I won't. And the mess with the thermostat, which gets willy killed. And my favorite joke of this story, and they're discussing the food at the school, and Kirk Van Houten, Milhouse's dad, talks about how he doesn't want Milhouse having two spaghetti meals in one day. I don't know why that's so funny to me, but it always kills me. Three, Homer. A little girl lost. It's a Twilight Zone episode based on a Richard Matheson story. This is also a little bit about just new technology. Patty and Selma are coming over, and everyone is hiding. Homer hides behind a bookshelf I don't recall ever seeing before, and it leads to the third dimension. 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 Things go wonky, obviously. Homer ends up in our world and goes to an erotic cake shop. This is far less about the humor or the story than it was about Homer in 3D, which at the time looked pretty good, and to be honest, it still doesn't look too bad. I mean, put some things into perspective, it's 1985, so it all kind of looks like a screensaver, but it was cool and the concept is neat. Homer gets a lot of character work here, being alone and scared in a new dimension. Marge thinks he's in the linen closet, and he gets to a fight with some geometry, which leads to some stimulating visuals. It's cool to see Homer get some kind of pathos here. Professor Frank wasn't overused here, so he was welcome. Reminds me of the book Flatland, uh, which was kind of an interesting take on 2D shapes and 1D shapes, etc. Episode 7 from Season 8, 1996, The Couch Grag is the Grim Reaper Kills All of Them. Story number one, The Thing and I which is half of an original story. The title is a reference to The King and I, which it has nothing to do with. The Simpson kids hear weird things in the attic, talking, moving, scraping, and Marge and Homer are dodgy and strange about it. After some fish heads and other shenanigans, turns out Bart had an evil Siamese twin that they keep in the attic like an animal. His name is Hugo. Hugo wants him and Bart to be whole, so he kidnaps him and tries to sue them together. But thanks to some timely intervention of Dr. Hibbert, he's stopped. In the end, it turns out Bart is the evil twin and must live in the attic and eat fish heads. 
a ton of fun with a nice twist ending and I that I didn't really see coming. I like how they can be very cold and borderline nihilistic on the Trios episodes, and it, it, it still comes off as humorous. Hugo was well-crafted. His design as a bleak parody of Bart was good. There were some tense moments and a few good jokes. Dr. Hibbert is the star of this one, discovering Bart is the evil twin and rectifying the situation. He also has a paper-cutter joke that I liked. Story number two, the Genesis Tub, based on a Twilight Zone episode called The Little People. Lisa lost a tooth, so she is going to do a science experiment. She puts it in a bowl and some cola on it, wonder proof cola is bad for you. But thanks to some stray electrical energy, it begins growing a little civilization. They worship Lisa, and Bart is their devil. Bart destroys part of their civilization because he's a dick. In retaliation, they launch tiny ships at him. In the end, they shrink Lisa down but can't make her bigger, so she's stuck there, and Bart takes tiny civilization into the science fair where he wins. It's always good to go back to the Twilight Zone, but this one wasn't quite as compelling as some of the others they've done uh, with that premise. It was fine, interesting enough, but it was pretty paint by the numbers Bart and Lisa feud story, and it didn't give us much more than that. Not even Ralph and his Wookiees could save that science fair. There's also no real highlights as far as jokes go. Story 3, Citizen Kang, based on the 1996 United States election, not the 1992 Marvel crossover event with the same names. Our old pals Kang and Kodos are no longer Rigelians. They kidnap Homer and force him to tell them who is in charge. Well, wouldn't you know, there's an election on. So the aliens kidnap President Bill Clinton, the man running against them, Bob Dole. They make themselves look like the two. So either way, they've taken over the country since America hates a third party. No one believes Homer since he's a drunk. And in the end, Kang wins and takes over the USA and presumably the world next. Oh, this one is genius. Phil Hartman reprises his SNL role as Slick Willie, so you know that's great. We get some really great jokes here. Homer offering his ass up for some anal probing. Kang and Kodos as Bob and Bill holding hands to exchange long protein strings. Ross Perot being upset about the third party. And of course, classic lines from both aliens. With Bob Bill saying to a crowd, abortions for some, miniature American flags for others. And Bill Clinton with his classic, forward, not backwards, upwards, not forwards. And always twirling, twirling, twirling towards freedom. Finally, Homer with his I voted for Kodos line. It's the true high point of the review thus far, at least this week. Its topical nature might not land perfectly. Frankly, you could replace Bill and Bob with just about any presidential election since then and get the same level of humor there, although maybe a little more depressing nowadays. So while it's technically dated, I think the jokes are timeless as they are. Why are Kang and Kodos not Rogelians anymore? They're from our solar system. I don't get it. I don't like it. You'll hear me complain about this again. Don't worry. Episode 8 from Season 9 in 1997. The couch gag is they are all electrocuted on the couch. I like that one. Story 1, The Omega Man. Based on The Omega Man, I Am Legend, The Last Man on Earth, etc. The Richard, Richard Matheson novelette is I Am Legend, the original one. Springfield has annoyed France, and I agree, France sucks. And they launch a nuke at Springfield. Thankfully, at the same time, Homer was looking at bomb shelters, so everyone is seemingly killed but him. We then get a montage of Homer abusing and molesting corpses as well as otherwise enjoying that he's the only person alive, but he's not. Some of the town folks are now ghouls, and after a fun drag race, he arrives home to find his family alive, thanks to the amount of lead paint on their house. They then gun down the ghouls with family shotguns. They're are two really funny jokes stick with me. Homer is recalling his family, you know, Marge, Bart, and Lisa, and they're all hitting, like, baseball bats, like, little Bart, little Lisa, little Marge, and then Maggie is lumped in with the rest, which is the cat dog in TV. Also, when they nuke is coming, it is headed towards comic book guy, who says, oh, I've wasted my life. Speaking of which, please check out my comic reviews, anti-life reviews, where I'm looking at Bart Simpson's Treehouse of Horror comics. Yeah, that was timely. But besides that, this story had a lot of a macabre and it. Homer was destroying corpses left and right. I mean, I guess we are in a, a jerk-ass Homer seasons. Uh, you know, when he, he crushes Kirk Van Houten's head, it's a little off-putting, but then you lean into the euphoria he feels on being able to do whatever he wants. Second part with the ghouls is a little rushed, but all in all, this is a more entertaining story than I actually recalled it being. Story two, Fly vs. Fly. Uh, David Cronenberg's The Fly, not really the Vincent Price original. The name is based off of Spy vs. Spy, a longtime Mad Magazine strip. 
Professor Frank is having a yard sale. Homer buys a teleporter. Bart finds that if you put two things in, they come all together. Getting two cat dogs, one that's a head back-to-back, -back, one that's asses back-to-back. -back. So he goes in, but so does a fly, and we get Bart with a fly's head and a fly with Bart's head. After some wackadoo, Lisa helps Bart get his original body back. Homer then attacks Bart with an axe. Homer using the teleporter is great. He uses it to get beer from the fridge, which he does incorrectly. Tries to use it to piss in the toilet, which Marge stops him, but I get his sentiment. Bart being a fly is kind of funny with him taunting a spider, tend to be caught in its web. So as Lisa says, she let the fly part use her toothbrush, which is disgusting. So pretty paint by numbers if you're familiar with the fly stories, but it flowed very well. There was a level of grossness to the fly, leaking stuff, eating sugar, being sticky that I liked and Homer trying to kill Bart and Marge just looking disaffected by it was a really nice ending. Story three, Easy Bake Coven, which is just about general witch stuff. 1649, people are being accused of being witches, and of course, burnt. Marge is also accused. Turns out, she is a witch! And her and her sisters begin terrorizing the town, kidnapping and eating children. And thanks to the Flanders, they're dissuaded thanks to some candy and food, thus creating Halloween as well, we learn, as the first caramel cod. Little homage to Macbeth with the witches, but beyond that, this was a tired boring story. It drags on. But maybe they were trying to have a moral point, but I can't for the life of me figure out what that might be. They're accusing people of being witches, which is bad, but the actual witches do eat kids. They admit that, so I don't know. Story dragged the episode down and ended on a yawn instead of a chuckle. Episode 9 from Season 10 in 1998, Couch Gag. This is one of the more elaborate ones that I kind of dig. The family kills each other like Marge pins Homer against the garage with a car, while Jason and Freddy wait inside for them. A little bit odd on that part. Story 1, Hell to Pay, which is based on an Amazing Stories uh, episode, which is a fantastic anthology TV show. Snake, local thug, is arrested for smoking indoors and is sentenced to death thanks to Moe, Bart, and Apu but his hair is transplanted onto Homer's head, which, of course, at times, takes over Homer's body and makes him kill. This leads to him trying to kill Bart with a sledgehammer until the cops come in and shoot the wig to death. So there were some good jokes, March telling Homer if his fly wasn't open, he'd look like Roger Moore, Dr. Nick shooting himself full of drugs, then punching Homer in the face to knock him out, and finding out Moe has syphilis. Beyond that, this was really boring. It, it had been told to death... Um, and I felt it felt really long. Homer chasing Bart around with a sledgehammer made me kind of uncomfortable. I don't know why. I don't mind him chasing him around with an axe and actually praise that part. So whatever. I, I just didn't like it. I, I genuinely didn't like the story. Um, that's two duds in a row for me. Story two, The Terror of Tiny Toon, which is based on Stay Tuned, 1992 movie that I love and everyone else seems to hate, though Jeffrey Jones does play the devil, which, considering him, makes a lot of sense. As happens, Marge takes the batteries so the kids don't watch violent Halloween TV. But Bart finds a radioactive core from Homer's toolbox and puts it in the remote, which sucks them into the TV. And they're sucked into some itchy and scratchy cartoons, with itchy and scratchy not appreciating the children's laughter at their torment. So they team up to kill the Simpsons children. After some generic, low-concept, itchy and scratchy goodness, including a poochie encounter and Bart having his body eaten by piranhas, Homer figures out how to save the kids, Itchy and Scratchy now live at the Simpson household, with Scratchy being neutered so he doesn't screw around with Snowball. This is pretty funny. The cartoon hijinks were certainly welcome, something we only really get in the Simpsons video games before, uh, all of, like Bart's Nightmare. So I was happy to see the meeting of Itchy and Scratchy with Bart and Lisa. Had some appropriate gore, and I like the ending a lot. It's not anything spectacular, but it was certainly in the decent range. Pacing was a little bit start, stop, start, stop. And the Regis and Kathy Lee stuff near the end was wholly stupid, but those were just what they were. Story 3, Starship Poopers. The name is based on Starship Troopers, but it's a fairly original story. Maggie is growing up, getting her tooth. It's sharp and pointed, as well as losing her baby legs, growing some tentacles. Her parents then return to Earth, and it's Kang of Kang and Kodo's fame. We then get some exposition about how he impregnated Marge, and it's, well, I don't have any words for it. It's rapey. It's totally inappropriate. Then they go on Jerry Springer, and Kang kills the audience, and presumably Jerry as well. Ends with Kang and Kodos going to destroy all the politicians. Maggie stays with the Simpsons, but she's also quite sinister. 
What was this? It was a mess. A total, complete mess. Marge is impregnated without her consent. Jerry Springer. The only good joke in this is when they go to Dr. Hibbert about Maggie, and he says to use fire, lots of it, and, and, and Marge says, that's a suggestion for everything. This could have worked. It could have been funny. I like the concept. Let's lose the, like, rape parts. Let's lose the Jerry Springer. I mean, it felt like a Mad Libs. It felt like a Family Guy segment. It's a legitimately poor writing. And wow, <laughs> what a disappointing story. Just garbage. Episode 10 from season 11 in 1999. Uh, we get Kang and Kodos introducing us. And we see the Simpsons are classic, well, relative, relatively classic version of themselves from previous Treehouse episodes. Bart's a fly. Homer's a jack in the box. Maggie's an alien. Marge is a witch. And Lisa has an axe in her head. Uh, but Maggie kills her. When did Lisa have an axe in her head? That's the one that didn't really make a lot of sense. Story 1. I know what you diddly Italy did. Based on, obviously, I know what you did last summer. Movie franchise. So Marge runs Flanders down with her car, and they have to fake his death, which I'll get to. Uh, but in classic Jennifer Love Hewitt fashion, someone knows what they did and begins harassing them. Turns out it's Flanders, and he isn't dead because he's also a werewolf, and he kills Homer. Okay, there's genuinely a lot of good here and two bad things. The good, God, the way Homer gets rid of Flanders' body is fantastic. Takes him up on the roof and makes sure Maude is watching, then acts like Flanders fell off, but Maude misses it. So he chucks Flanders into his house and says, I'm having a heart attack. Great stuff there. Homer wanting to run down Millhouse since Marge got to kill someone. Once again, loved it. Simpsons getting threatening calls, but it turns out it was just Mo calling them on accident. <laughs> Great. Those are all highlights. And the parody was fine as well. Two glaring issues. One they can't help, and one that's a writing issue. One they can't help. Maude's voice changed. I hate it. I know they were having disputes with the actress. I do not enjoy her voice here. And two, Flanders is a werewolf was fucking stupid. Besides that, that one minute at the end, I like the story, had enough going for it to be very entertaining, and a little bit of that Halloween nihilism that I like. Story number two, Desperately Zeking Xena, which is based on some superhero generalities. Due to radiation at the school, Bart and Lisa get superpowers. They face off against comic book guy who has kidnapped Lucy Lawless, who is Xena, warrior princess, if you don't know. He managed to take out the kids, but thanks to Lucy's interference, the day is saved and she flies the kids away because she can fly. So some of the other people Kumpa guys kidnapped is Tom Baker's fourth doctor in his second appearance in the show, I believe. Yasmin Bleeth, Matt Groening himself, and Seven of Nine. I'm sure there are more. This reminds me of the new Justice Team story in Futurama, which had Captain Yesterday, Clubberella, and Super King. That story was much, much more satisfying than this one. This one was kind of stupid, frankly. So the weird non-sequitur ending. Like, what am I supposed to get from that? It wasn't funny. It just came off confusing. The only good joke was Kumpa Guy used a magnet to kidnap Lucy, who could easily escape that she removed her metal bra, but a bunch of nerds were watching, so she didn't. Bit of a mess, story-wise, with a bad ending. Uh, watch the Futurama episode instead. It's season four, episode four. Story three, last story of the week. Life's a glitch, then you die, which is based on the Y2K bug. That's K-Bug is hitting, and, well, everything goes to shit, thanks mostly to Homer. The world begins to fall apart with a glorious heaping of violence, rioting, and all the things you might expect. Thanks to a dead crusty, the Simpsons find out they are letting important people off-world, which it certainly didn't age well with some of these people, namely, you know, like Bill Gates, Mel Gibson, I guess. But Lisa is welcome aboard and chooses Marge to go with her. Bart and Homer find another ship they get aboard, which is some people like Tom Arnold, Spike Lee, and Rosie O'Donnell. Well, Lisa's ship is going to a new planet, and Homer's is going to the sun. So and Bart eject and die, and their heads burst in space. If Lisa was supposed to be on the ship, why didn't she know about it? Krusty knew about it. I don't understand. Lots of 2000 topical stuff, so it dates this one, but I'll gloss over most of it because it's really surface level and not that important. An actual pretty entertaining story. Lots of rapid-fire jokes, lots of violence in the ending. Honestly, Tom Arnold saying he doesn't know... What makes him such a bad guy? He never tied anybody up and forced him to watch his movies. And he could because he's a big guy and he's good with knots. I did enjoy that. The death sequence to Homer and Bart is iconic. I actually really liked this story. The writing was light, the pace was brisk, and it gave a lot of comedy with a morbid backdrop. All right, let's talk about these episodes themselves. Episode 6. This episode came off as more of a conceptual episode, a proof of concept, than a classic Halloween one. Um, it toyed with some different kinds of ideas, animation and modeling. The first story didn't really land with me and was just there. Two felt a lot more classic. The parody, uh, it was good. The last one, you know, it's hard to rate it 
it's not really about the story. It's about doing something new and innovative. So while I think they did a pretty good job of giving us something new, that 3D, uh, I kind of hope that trend doesn't continue. Once in a while, it's smart to go out of your comfort zone. But you literally have all season to do that. So let's keep the Halloween ones. Halloween. Yeah. Number seven. Well, my concerns were easily dashed that they were going to continue with the conceptual idea. Um, and this, this is not only a return to form, but we got some classics here. All three of them work. They were compelling in their own right, have some humor, some Halloween flair. But of course, it's Citizen Kang that is a standout here. And that's not even by a small margin. It makes the episode. It makes the episode. The other stories are pretty good um, to capital. But Citizen Kang sets it over the line and makes this truly a classic Treehouse of Horror episode. In fact, they took what could have been a, a lot more formulaic of a story and kind of played around with it. it was nice. You don't really know where it's going to go, even for its short, you know, what is it, eight minutes. Um, more Kang and Kodos, please. And we see woeful little of them in the next, like, you know, ten episodes, which sucks. Um, <clears throat> episode eight. I hate to call it a mixed bag, as two-thirds of it was actually pretty damn good. The Fly Story, Mega Man were both fun, funny, and a little gross in their own rights, and had reasonably decent pace. They both kind of went where you might expect them to go. The ending of Omega Man was very satisfying. But yeah, good stories, nice horror elements used. The Witch Story was hard to get through. Um, despite its short length, it was really tiring. I may be sick of the witch hunting genre kind of thing, but this didn't... It didn't do anything for me in general. Uh, Sans the caramel cod joke, which I, I don't know why I find that so funny, but it was good. It was a pretty lazy effort and showed, and I think it hurt the overall episode, honestly, and I hate to say that. Episode 9. This episode shows the quality of writing that made me stop watching the show. While there are some good jokes in each of these stories, and I like the Simpsons meeting Itchy and Scratchy, I'm a sucker for that dynamic. As an episode, it was rather poor, uninspired, confusing in tone, was either overly formulaic or went way too far out there. It was an objectively bad episode of Trials of Horror, and it's making me concerned that I'm going to be hating on a, a majority of the remainder of the episodes, and I really don't want that. I hope 10 will pick me up, but if not, I'm still going to try to keep an open mind with the remaining 10 episodes, a lot of which I've not seen, maybe most of which I've not seen. This does not bode well, it does not give me anything but anxiety, about the remainder of this this endeavor that I'm into, and that's not good. This is a skippable episode. In fact, I would recommend skipping it. Grumble, 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 grumble. Um, episode 10, the last one of, of this week at least. This was significantly better than the last. It certainly had its drawbacks. The Xena story didn't really work, and Flanders as a Werewolf was dumb. Beyond that, I actually liked a lot of the humor going forward. I, I laughed. It felt kind of nicely paced and had solid morbid Halloween edge that, that I've mentioned I enjoy. I'm glad we ended on kind of an up note, because after the last episode I was feeling pretty sour, uh, to be to be honest with you. <laughs> this one gave me some hope going into next week that I will be adequately satisfied with my decision for the first time in my life. Uh, but I'm not holding my breath. Overall, this was part two of my Simpsons Trails of War retrospective. I, I call it retrospective. It's more just a look at. I think we really got uh, an next back here. Add a little trademark to that because there was some very good, some absolutely fucking dreadful here. I don't think anything reached the heights of episode five, but I think the lows were lower than episode two in some of the cases, and that's concerning. But hey, we are going to move on, and you're going to be here next week from part three, and we'll see what I think then. Thank you so much to everyone who watches, everyone who subs, everyone who likes, anyone who even clicks on my shit. Hope you have a wonderful Halloween month, and I hope you will be here with me for the remainder of my reviews. Don't forget to subscribe. Add me on Instagram under Demon Peaks for daily, daily Twin Peaks memes. And also, just have the best day you can from me, the Tona Makaya, Master of Minds and of Men. And of course, goodbye. <laughs>